they were able to get a consistent 60 FPS, fully ray traced, uh, what was it, Quake 2 RTX, mm-hmm. at, prepare yourselves for this, this is mind boggling, at a solid 252p. Yep. <laughs> yeah, quite, quite, that's, that's Quake 2's native resolution, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it 640 by 480? That's like Shut twice. Up, hey. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits in our little Linux-powered studio, joined every week by one Jordan Kwang, up in oh, Torontosville, and uh, staying up late past his bedtime, you know him, you love him, the man who can turn a USB hole into another USB hole with his handy hole adapter. Pedro, <laughs> with this handy, day. handy hole. <laughs> Together with you, Shadrum Dynamic, join us live, Elvinus form. Cocaine will draw. Now, before we get started, we'd like to play a little bit of catch up, but I, I promised everybody I have the most ridiculous fuck mothering headphones you've ever seen. Okay. Oh, I saw the picture of the big chunky ones. Yep. <laughs> to, to the point. What, what prompted this? <laughs> These are something, headphones I've been looking at looking for for like a couple of years but they were just overpriced so i always had like ebay and like let's see if one shows up refurbished or you know used or anything like that mm. two years later I'm like yeah, yeah all right it was at that price you know I'm like I, i'll nibble it and plus it was a factory refurb so i could return it if i i posted this in our discord earlier this week and i think our theory was like i don't get it what's the problem because i was supposed to picture of them in the box I was expecting more. And I'm like, I I don't think you're wrapping your mind around this. So I included a pair of my (laughs) MDR 7506s for scale. (laughs) These things are big, (laughs) like comically big. And are they, are they heavy though? Do they make you feel like princess Leia? Here's the part two. All of that, all the silver stuff that's straight up blocks of steel, man. Or middle element. Yeah. (laughs) So (laughs) you start getting the neck pains like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it, they are chunky. Um, mm-hmm. I, not something that I would ever tell anyone to buy, but the reason you get these is because of this little switch right here. It's a three-way toggle switch. Mm-hmm. And uh, that lets them sound bad in three unique ways. Ah. <laughs> this is, it's a little bit it's clever. It's uh, from Avantone, and they make the mix cubes, which people are really digging. Plus, they make some high-end headphones that audiophiles love. But what this does is in its normal position, it emulates what you would expect from consumer like beat style headphones, what people would. Okay. And you put it in mix cube and it does an approximation of their mix cube. And it does that with these ginormous drivers for mixing and all the way back, it puts everything and just crunches it down to mono. So you can get that mono channel. Right. So yeah, if you see anybody out and about wearing these things, laugh at them. Because they <laughs> try, try, try and hit the switch on the side of their head. Uh, try to like, ha ha! Now you're, now you're all <laughs> they, yeah, they <laughs> genuinely serve no purpose outside of a studio for mixing. Like they, these are designed to prevent you from buying, having studio monitors or what I typically do is I have a couple of pair of headphones that I'm a B testing when I'm doing EQ or anything like that. And click and choose, but yeah, they're not also not something you want to wear around uh, day in and day out. I couldn't imagine uh, having. I mean. I, they're comically large. That's it. End of that story. Are, are they are they AT twenty twenty levels of sturdy? Like if you were wearing them out yes. on the street, could you like swing them around and like attack <laughs> someone with them? Like I just pick these up and you have that thing of like mm, when you pick them up. Yeah, they're, like, they're, it's it's hefty. Yeah. All that's metal. Like that is not right. that's not for sure. I mean, I guess it is for sure, but whatever. And it's kind of like a screw in headphone jack, kind of like the AKGs, which I like. You know, the AKGs have the snap in ones, like the one Pedro mm-hmm. has which are replaceable, you know, it did come with like <laughs> a couple of different cords, but yeah, now I got to find a, like, I got to buy a headphone stand or something. Cause I don't know where to put them. They're so damn big, uh, <laughs> but I'm calling it a win because I don't have to get studio monitors, which makes me happy. And it's for editing this show. Uh, Trek mania. We're still back at that. If you want to come hang out with us, uh, we had a good time Friday, went through some maps, 14 fresh new businesses. If you like physics platforming with racing cars, that's what we do. Check out our Discord for more information on that. And also, audio tonight is coming directly through Jitsi. I know, right? Uh, That, man, this was... uh, (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> this was like flipping bits and playing with some stuff. Uh, w- when you get to the part in the config file, it's like undocumented functions that are all commented out. Right. Yeah. That's where I was at. And, the, uh, oh, what does this button do? Right. Part of the process. <laughs> the, uh, like, shit that exists, but we don't say exist, and uh, ratcheting up the audio quality with Opus. Traditionally, we use Sonobus, but this just simplifies it on all ends and sounds fine. I mean, I got it up to, it's like 500K Opus, no processing whatsoever, just like a raw connection. And after we figured out that this computer, had the uh, Pedro's computer had its sound card still activated. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> then we could hear Pedro and we were done. And all the- <laughs> I could hear you guys, but you couldn't hear me. Right. <laughs> it- <laughs> Just the way I like it. Uh, <laughs> how about, Oh, also this is like week two of the show on Reaper. I think I kind of got it tamed. It's doing all its right. thing. It's Linux. I'm digging it. I got to figure out like the signal flow and how the, you know, some different plugins and things like that for us for the live broadcast. But, I like the feel. I mean, you get a lot for like, I bought a license forever ago. I mean, it's cheap. It's like 60 bucks, but you can use Reaper for absolutely free. It's got one of those WinZip screens on it. Oh, the, 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 the WinRAR Nagware. Like, thing, ah, buy, buy, buy a copy, <laughs> buy a copy. It's completely copy. functional, 100% not crippled, and button. like, hey, why don't you buy it? And you probably Please would end up buying it. Many. Yeah. By the by the way, that offer still stands. If you're someone who has paid for a copy of WinRAR, I want you on the show. I want to interview you. I want to know what's right. Like. So, yep, stay tuned for videos on using uh, Reaper as well, because I, I realize that's what most people are using, younger kids. And uh, yeah, so I, I want to get some stuff out for that. How about you, Jordan? Oh, not much. It's been a pretty low key week. We had a we had a short one this week, so I had uh, nothing, not much to do at work. Uh, well, we did some Black for Blood on Thursday. It works reasonably well. Man, we should probably uh, play some of that tonight. Yeah, we 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 pr- we probably will. Um, I mean, if you if you bought the MP3 Codex, if you bought a Raspberry Pi, uh, yeah, no no real exciting shit for me this week. What about you, Pedro? Did you buy any new laptops? No. <laughs> in fact, since I bought the uh, the Steam Deck, I have been very much okay, and my hands have been busy uh, most of the time. Yeah, feel free to take that out polishing of context. Polishing the Steam Deck. <laughs> yes. Yeah, pol- polishing, the, polishing the joysticks. Yeah. Huh? Gotta keep but, it clean. But uh, today was actually a day that I didn't play very much at all uh, on the Steam Deck. I, the You know, the Amazon MMO that burns GPUs? Yeah, I've been playing that because it works on Linux now. And uh, thank Did you, Mango Hug people. No, no, I didn't try it on the Steam Deck. Supposedly it ah. works there too. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, I just use Mango Hut to limit the FURPS to 60, and it doesn't use 100% of the 1080, so I'm okay. It will not burn through that, I hope. <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a great time to as get an MMO video card. Patreon, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I do got to ask you, though, man, um, since you have a Steam Deck, I. Do you, do you happen to have a harmonica later on? I, I not here. No, I had a few in <laughs> Portugal. <laughs> I had like two of them. They were they looked exactly the same, except one was blue and the other one was pink. Mm. <laughs> My favorite thing about this post is uh, on our Steam Deck. Uh, somebody took harmonicas are now Steam Deck verified. They took a harmonica, a couple of them, and put them over the exhaust port, which has enough gusto to play the harmonica. It's like well played, well played. Ex- ex- excellent. <laughs> My favorite thing was in the guy's original post on um our Steam Deck was conspiracies. Like this is clearly you've edited the audio. All the harmonicas sound the same. And the guy wrote back and he's like, yeah, they're all in C C sharp, dude. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's how what, harmonicas yeah, work. That's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unless you get a significantly different sized one. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Oh man, have you ever seen the people with like the the harmonica bandolier where it's all like they have the different tunings of harmonicas? No, I have a I bought a harmonica with that weird thing of like I'm like no like, no nah, I'm not. Nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, everyone wants to play the harmonica lip from the uh, riff from the beginning of the Wizard by Black Sabbath, and then <laughs> you, yeah, that's easy enough. To yeah, do. but yeah, when it came down to doing anything more than like her her, the kid went back in its box. That's where yeah. it was now. <laughs> all right. Uh, what do we get it? Oh, right. We, we have to summon the horse, but it, I don't think get, it, get, get the harmonica. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> you can, o- you can only summon the horse with the harmonica. It's the steam. Yep, 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 yep. Oh. Japanese harmonicas. At oh least. man, we, this is kind of weird. This is kind of weird. Um, also, uh, 
where we at? Steam's latest survey results suggest an increase in Japanese users, which... <laughs> Hey. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. I have questions about this because I really wonder what the bump is because PC gaming, as I, you know, I'm not making anything up, is not that popular in Japan, but we're seeing a not 0.45% increase, which that's a chunk of people when you put it in Steam numbers. And do, do you think it has anything to do with like the deck? being sold mm-hmm. or yeah maybe? I, uh, I mentioned it outside of the show last week uh it's in the uh live thing if you want to go have a look but i have one of the columns on my um, on my t- uh, not steam deck tweet deck um just for the steam deck and there's a lot of japanese people gushing over the little plank shaped boiling water powered handheld gaming device that valve just released so here one, mostly one, playing one important games thing. but <laughs> one, one, one interesting thing is uh, they're, they're referencing the Steam hardware survey, which we can go look at if we want. Uh, but uh, I looked at the distro breakdown. I didn't see any notion of uh, Steam OS. I saw a lot of mm-hmm. Archon and, and quote unquote Manjaro growth. I don't know if Steam OS is being captured as that, but it doesn't look like um, it, it, it looks like the, that those survey numbers are a little too early to factor in like the actual Steam Deck numbers. Maybe maybe when like the the uh, April one comes out, we'll probably get some. It does boil down to like what caused it though, right? Because yeah, that's I, a significant I mean, I, jump. I I think it might be price. Ultimately, like Xbox, PlayStation games, they're expensive, and once you get past the initial buy-in cost, PC gaming is certainly a lot cheaper. It's like you can you can get ten dollar games, fifteen dollar games of like AAA quality, right? Yeah, this is true. And, Handheld gaming devices are very, very popular in Japan, so it wouldn't surprise me if it were the deck. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, Steam Deck is just registering for new accounts, right? Like, that's really all it's tracking. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is that. I mean, maybe they want to buy a GPU update for their Steam Deck. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did we see this? Yeah, buddy. Did everyone see this? A uh, couple people added a uh, external GPU to their Steam Deck using the uh, M.2. What is that? PCI yep. by one or by four? Yeah, by four. four. Uh, by four. How did that work out, Pedro? You paid more attention to it than I did. It works uh, if you have an AMD card. It works exactly as you'd expect. It is You are limited to uh, its PCIe by 3, so it doesn't actually have the uh, Gen 4. Uh, uh, it's only Gen 3, mm-hmm. so keep that in mind. But if you have an AMD card, it just works. You're going to need to find a clever way to do storage some other way, probably using the micro SD card or getting a splitter and <laughs> having the SSD off of the same M.2 connection. That, that That's going to cause some bandwidth contention, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> but uh, the one that actually stuck out with me, because th- that's the uh, the video from ETA Prime there, uh, it's the latest one. Uh, UFD Tech, I think, was the first one to actually do it. And the first time that they tried to actually boot it, they tried with an NVIDIA card mm-hmm. and it would just get stuck in the BIOS. It wouldn't get past the BIOS at all. But yeah, if you have an AMD card, it works. Uh, um, ETA Prime was having issues getting it to work with SteamOS, but with Windows, it just booted. So I want I want to see that. like a, a, a case mod for the Steam Deck where it's basically just a backpack that has like a giant like APC battery backup and like a G- external GPU dock and just like some shit, right? Like just oh, to, I can that, see that. No, what I it, want it's, is it's like, like, it's like the Game Boy like super tower of power, but like. Yes, I, like an extra chunk. <laughs> Steam Deck. No, no, no. We we take like regular full size. Somebody's going to three D print this, and on the top for a cartridge slot, it's just got a full by sixteen. Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> click it right in, man. All right, uh, we a little bit of Steam Deck. It's not going to be packed with Steam Deck, but we do want to touch on the Steam Deck's ability to trace rays. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, this is from Ars Technica, and they're talking about um, the RDNA 2 ray tracing support. Uh, doesn't exist in uh, on the SteamOS side as of now. Um, four games they bring up, uh, Quake 2, RTX, Control, Metro Exodus, and Doom Eternal, don't uh, expose the RTX options under Linux. They do under Windows because, you know, you're just using the Windows drivers. Um, 
And they're like, yeah, oh, it's future proofing. Well, we got them. The only way to future proof your Steam Deck is to install Windows on it, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing, though. Uh, ray tracing on RDNA 2 has been supported as a Mesa as of 21.3. I saw, We talked about the Mike Blumenkrantz article where he's like, yeah, we can figure out how to set up uh, ray, hardware ray tracing for RDNA 1 as well because we figured it out. It's the same shader shit. Uh, but Proton is going to definitely need some work if it's going to take advantage of the ray tracing bits. I don't know. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you suspect it's going to have like a good impact on performance or battery Pedro? Oh yeah. <laughs> Even uh, with the very, very constrained resolution that they were running it at, I can imagine that if you are going to be using that, APU to its full extent, it, the battery will go down even quicker. But yeah, it is uh, much like it had to be done for the NVIDIA drivers. Uh, that needs to be enabled specifically on Linux. And since, well, there was really no point to it because it, most of the ray tracing was happening over on NVIDIA side and all of the ray tracing implementations were being done for NVIDIA specifically. It's like, why... Why would anyone take the time out of their day to do that for the AMD drivers? Well, there's a, uh, <laughs> again, there's a deck that uh, is making that argument scream very, very loudly. But yeah, well, no, I, that's good. That's more functionality. That's good. I, I, I think I think it also may have to do with the fact that like getting your hands on an RDNA two card is has, presents a bit of a like practical problem in terms of like you have to take a lean against your house in order to afford it. Uh, so yeah. I think that's also been stopping a lot of the ray tracing on AMD stuff. On this Linux is true, version. but you got to think about it, goes uh, because like uh, you know Nvidia, you did a good job with marketing because people think you need specialized hardware for ray tracing, which yeah. I mean some or G Sync, right? <laughs> we were talking like, oh no, I said ray tracing on a graphing calculator; it can be done. But <laughs> what I liked about this, what they were able to do on the deck is. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I mean, being able to do it at all is just jaw dropping because I didn't expect to be able to do any type of uh, serious ray tracing with that. Because I look at my my twenty sixty that I have in the box here in the studio, uh, that is a uh, something to laugh at because you enable the ray tracing in Quake Two RTX and it struggles at ten eighty p to get at forty forty two. And uh, uh, I, on your ten eighty ti, it's even I, more I, laughable. Isn't I, it? I, 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 I think I got it up to sixteen frames a second now. At 720? <laughs> 720p with minimum uh, ray tracing yeah. enabled. The um, GTX 1080 does 20. Ooh. 20 yeah. FPS. <laughs> oh. So, uh, okay, maybe you don't want to run SteamOS on uh, your Steam Deck because steamy reasons. I mean, you can use the other version of SteamOS that is also based on Arch Linux, except not really, because the developers came at us very, very quickly. It's, look, it's Arch, but it's not Arch, so don't say it like it's Arch, but it is Arch, and so is SteamOS 3. But no, this is uh, Gamerous, or Chimera OS, as it's uh, now known. Yes. Uh, and version 32 is now out. Uh, you get the latest 5.17 kernel, Mesa 22, the NVIDIA 5.10.54 drivers. Uh, you get the Steam Compositor Plus and the, uh, what is it? RetroArch 1, uh, 1.10, uh, which is very, very nice. And um, yeah, the, they have a bunch of new stuff uh, out if you've been tracking the uh, Chimera OS development. And if you have it installed, on one of your machines. It's a very good uh, alternative. Steam Pal is like the, the big thing because you can just access it via a browser and set up emulation games directly to the, the big picture mode without having to go into desktop mode and futzing so around for yourself. Nice. <laughs> the the new version of Chimera OS does have some bugs though. It's not Chimera's fault though. Apparently, <laughs> setting a global Proton version borks external apps, and that's Valve's fault. There's a there's an open issue on the Steam GitHub for that. The deck UI is also borked, but they kind of know that and they want feedback uh, so that they can unbork it on the deck. Uh, also, RPCS three it's enabled by default again if you want to play some yeah. uh, PlayStation three <laughs> games. If D Demon Souls non remastered. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that's pretty neat, man. <laughs> and you know, I there, there there's now a toggle, so smashing the power button puts the system to sleep instead of um killing it. Like, kind of should. In my opinion, I just hope there's a toggle for that to cut it back. Yeah, because, let me change it back, please. Because well, let's be honest. I mean, I might be alone. I very might, well might, but uh, that's my nuke from orbit. Like, I can't even SSH into the box, or it's hung. Like, you know what? Fine. You, Barring I mean, that, you pull the power up. 
You, I mean, usually holding it down for like 15 seconds, like triggers the just kill switch. Doesn't it? You, on most I things. don't have 15 seconds, man. <laughs> uh, 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 this, yeah, I, I, I know. Time is running out. Justin Timberlake stole it. From but me. that's actually how I had the uh, Steve Box 360 set up. It was the power button was for power. So I didn't have to go to the power thing and select shut down. No, you just get up, hit the power button. On, on, a, on a handheld, that's a little different because, like, that's your suspend button. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, well, yeah. that shut down my entire console now. Yeah, Maybe that's held, it. Yeah. I just don't expect suspend to work, but I'm glad it works as well as it does on the Steam Deck. A couple of new games for everybody this week. And this is not Launchcraft. No, it's full of lumens, but still crafting. Lumen. Lumencraft, yeah. Uh, this is, uh, what, what did I describe this is The top-down baby that resulted from the orgy of deep rock galactic terraria and plants versus zombies. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a mining, it's a top-down shooter mining game. Uh, you can, uh, you, you uh, harvest resources, you build structures, it's, it has some tower defense elements. Um, it has fully destructible environments, which is pretty neat. And for 10 bucks, it's a reasonable early access ask. Uh, but it's got one one big problem. There's the shared split screen co op, which means no online co op. And buddy, yeah. this isn't this this is this isn't early access. So you better be adding online multiplayer before you leave early access. Otherwise, we're gonna I don't know tear you a new asshole on a <laughs> podcast that no one listens to. <laughs> uh, Alien breed. The, the Foxy brings up a very good point and. Um shut realm uh it is it it does okay alien breed was more 3d this one is very clearly more 2d a- alien breed or based. alien swarm oh baby i am confusing those yes mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I don't know because I, I thought alien swarm but if there there might be a game called alien breed i 100 percent. yeah right. <laughs> yeah no could be <laughs> now i'm not sure <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> you rattled my face. <laughs> Let's talk about something a bit more realistic. Um, airborne motocross, because that's the thing. Fly with your bike, race others, explore. Once you've got the hang glider mounted on. I went looking this up. I did, because I was a little curious. I'm like, haven't I witnessed it? You can also have a unicorn bike, which almost sold me. You almost sold me. <laughs> and it's a fun little party game. You know, you race and you do backflips and you glide. And, uh, I thought I had seen somebody on a dirt bike with uh, a hang glider. Turns out that's a thing. Kind of kind of surprised about that. Yeah, building a sky bike is something you can do at home with a family, but probably once. only once. Yeah, <laughs> there is that. Uh, this is a mobile game. Let's be honest about it. Five ninety nine. I went and looked it up. This is available on the Play Store for free. And you know what? We could probably have a good time. What, are you getting like some speedrunners vibes from this? Uh, sp- Speedrunner. Well, so here, here's the thing though: is that the multiplayer they have is like action Hank style, like ghosts. Mm. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's async, so you can compete against your friends' times, but that's that's about it. Yeah, this is if you're gonna make it five ninety nine, which is a free game on the Play Store, like add in some bonus stuff, and we're gonna harp on this till our end of days. Is an online multiplayer because hey, that's kind yes. of a thing you need. What do you need on Linux to run this? Two gigs of RAM, nothing. I mean, you need, you need a phone. Apparently. SSE two, <laughs> yeah, uh, OpenGL three point two. That's uh, yeah. It's at least it's not GLES, so right? they at least did that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the big news for this week. B four B B B. Yeah, April twenty two, uh, April twenty twenty two update for Back for Blood. They have uh, they have support now for uh, easy anti cheat in uh, Proton Experimental. You got to be on the bleeding edge. That's the main thing people actually care about. They have a bunch of game balance shit and new features, right. hives, legendary weapons. No one gives a fuck about that shit. You yeah, can actually play how it. This goes down. Control F. Uh, yeah, there, Linux. There. Yeah, yeah. There uh, it, is. It, it fucking runs now. We uh, we did a stream of it on Thursday. Um, it was myself, uh, myself, Mr. Fox Dog, Nubbin, uh, Strider. And yeah, we uh, we went through a couple levels. We found out that like veteran mode is a little too difficult for us. So you we know what? I, was, I tuned in. And I was watching you guys just getting squad right wiped after taking like four, possibly five steps into the level. And I'm like, wait yeah. a minute. Do, do you not have this on like easy? And George's like, no, <laughs> we have this on veteran. Like, <laughs> well, it's, uh, all right, all right. You know, you know, you know. May- maybe it was hubris on my part to think that like we've played a lot of Left 4 Dead. We n- we know our way around a-, a zombo game, right? Not this specific zombo game. And I think that yeah, that that was a little bit of arrogance on my part. But you know, easy easy mode is like 
Man, it, it, I, I I remarked. I'm like, wow. I got we. It took us a lot longer to get to this point. Oh right, yeah, easy mode. Mm. <laughs> birds. You know, I did have a good time of like who was going to shoot the birds. He's like, I didn't mean to shoot the birds. He's like, Jordan, you shot the bird. I'm like, everyone's shooting birds. Uh, back for blood. I, I shot the birds the first time. Right. Spider, spider shot the second time. I'm like, yes, not me. <laughs> Fuck yes. I tried this out. We all picked up a copy. We'll be playing this in the after shows and um, really giving a good proper shakedown if you want to join us for that. Uh, the only thing I had to do, I had to throw the DX11 flag on it for lunch yep. because it oh. was like, you do not have a DX12 video card. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to argue if this works. And I did that and it worked. So that was the end of that. Yep. Also, uh, Steam Overlay has a problem with it. If you're on NVIDIA, uh, you're shit out of luck. Apparently, uh, launching this in game scope is fine because of the easy EAC stuff. But you can play with your Steam friends. You just have to go to the chat icon on the top right hand side and then it gives you the option to invite and manage your Steam friends. And hopefully, just a heads up. We'll hopefully get an update. Up. We'll get an update from Katana. Because Katana scared them out of me because I knew you were going to stream it uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? I'm like, all right, that's good. And so like Wednesday afternoon, Katana's like, it doesn't work anymore. I'm like, God, really? It, yeah, I think it's just broken for him because <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I did everything he did and it works. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He got it up and running. So well, I, I hope he did. Uh, but yeah, we were talking about that in the pre-shows and uh, it might have been the pre-pre-super shows and for our patrons. Uh out of like this versus Fall Guys, I thought we would have a like, yeah, I, I, fully I, I functional, got, like approved Fall Guys before we had uh, Back for Blood up and running. I had 90 <laughs> full minutes of Back for Blood, and I got less than 30 of Fall Guys. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, th Thursday is starting to become Jordan sucks at easy anti-cheat, so I think we're going to keep going. Until, <laughs> thank, you for, uh, thank you, brave soldier, for testing it. It did open up a lot of doors, yes. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, what do we have up next? Oh, it's a Pedro game. Dead Cells. Yes. Uh, as it turns out, uh, Motion Twin, not done with their uh, very, very popular and possibly the one game that you can actually get eight hours out of battery from the Steam Deck. Uh, Dead Cells, yes. There's a new alpha uh, that has a bunch of accessibility options and uh, it reworks quite a few of the beginner items and there's assist mode where it actually will give you some hands-on help uh, to the best of the engine's ability. Th this is all optional, obviously, uh, and th they do go into detail uh, as to what a lot of them do. Not just visual stuff, but also um, like controller assists, audio assists. It's very well done, very well thought out. So... The first thing that popped into my brain when I see, ooh, a game is doing a really nice thing for people with accessibility issues so that they can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Let's go look at the comments. And there it is. There's a yeah, group don't, of people. Don't read the comments. <laughs> yeah, there's a group of people down there that are just, oh, you're introducing an, um, an accessibility mode. So thought your game was supposed to be hard. I guess I'm not playing anymore. So, All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's... <laughs> Put the uh, kibosh on that, please, because as someone who, you know, does have a congenital uh, physical defect, I very much appreciate a game developer, be it for a hard game or whatever type of game it happens to be, to make the game accessible for everyone who may want to play it, but just straight up can't. Now, it doesn't affect me as much because it's just one hand that isn't fully developed. Okay, so I can, stay, I can still play most games, but I... I'm very much aware of that, and I very much appreciate it when other people can play the same game that I like. You know, if you like a game, why wouldn't you want more people no, to no, buy Pedro, the game that you like? <laughs> Pedro, you, you have to pay $90 Canadian for a game that is you, you can't play because it's too difficult, and you just got you got to suck it up. Well, yeah. here's it. <laughs> The, the, so the the uh, the actual the actual accessibility stuff is actually pretty neat. They go pretty in depth with mm -hmm. it. Um, control twe tweaks include uh, holding to double jump. Uh, you can do a shield toggle instead of having to time it perfectly. You can do a hold to roll, and some they they allow you some grace periods and some modifications for a lot of the multi input commands. Uh, in case you have like coordination issues, uh, there's also a continue mode. So when you die, you just restart at the beginning of the stage instead of fully restarting the run. Although apparently rage quitting did that too. So they just added an additional <laughs> thing. Uh, but like, it, but even shit like adjusting parry timings and to Pedro's point, like, Oh no, you added an easy mode. Most people, after they beat a game in easy mode, if they really like the game, they'll go back and play it at a harder difficulty. 
That's kind of mm-hmm. the point of easy That's mode. That's kind of the this traditional is- thing, man, like New Game Plus. Yeah. And you can think of it this way. If you don't want to call it easy mode, call it a uh, Steam in-home streaming mode. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that hard mode? Because you have to account for the latency. Well, that's what I'm saying. You can put it on like super easy, like this, <laughs> right, you know, right, accessibility right. mode. Then you can play it with your in-home streaming through Steam, mm-hmm. and it should fight each other out. To, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, you, 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 yeah. With with the with the combination of the ad bot, aim bot, and the added latency, mm-hmm. you should be able to. Hit it it even out. Yeah. yeah. Either way, you're gonna have a good time with it. Yeah. So it's, it's like taking an emodium and a laxative and letting them fight each other out. <laughs> Coming up next, how many chippies are you willing to uh, pay money for? Was it was a one chippy? About what chip about chippies? About the cracktastic adventure that is Expedition Underneath Castle Greyhawk, because it's very silly. Seems legit. All right, everyone. New segment in three. You know it's coming, but we do need to chill for ourselves. That that that's kind of the deal. What this is like the point in the middle of the show that we well, I was going to say we need to make ourselves presentable to you, but I honestly don't ever <laughs> We need to make ourselves sexier. I don't know. I we, just we, want to mess need... with like start messing with Pedro's shot, but I don't want to break it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know what? Much like old Dungeons and Dragons, we only progress if we make money. So head on over to <laughs> patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Give us our XP, damn it. Become a mm, Patreon. Mm, Sub mm. to us. Get access to our Discord channel. You can also get to that uh, via subbing to us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. Right. You get some cool stuff. You get access to the pre-pre super shows in where myself, Ven, and Pedro bullshit for an hour before we go live here. You get the custom video feed for that. You can just listen to it in audio form if you're in Discord. Though, um, you get your name in the credits. You can buy your way onto the show if you want. Uh, you get early access to some of the videos uh, that are getting put out. Ven, you have you mentioned you have one coming soon, right? I'm working on a couple of like audio things, man. Uh, the NetJack one, um, I've made some progress on that. I'm trying not to overthink it. It's a really cool thing we can do on Linux with um, audio lo- super low latency, like lossless transfer, how the studio is stuck together. And I want to get that information out there because Jordan, you've experienced just how atrociously that entire thing is documented. It's wrong. Yeah, it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're like, no, that's actually the thing for Jack 2. You're reading the Jack 1 instructions. But it says Jack 2. Yeah, uh-huh. they're lying. Yeah. Like, He's just making but, it up. And but why? This week, while doing research into this video, uh, I found a thing that I had no idea. It was not documented. It's. Uh, have you ever heard of the audio adapter driver? No. No, me either. I had to like Google it and here we go back on this mailing list from like 11 <laughs> years ago. And I'm like, what? I could have done. Okay. So that's going to be fun. Plus, I got some other audio stuff and video stuff because, hey, man, that's what I like to do. I want to enable people to do what we do and without having to reinvent the wheel because I hate, hate, hate seeing that. And uh, yeah, just get everybody up yeah. and running. So, indeed. We we got uh, we got uh, if you want to make yourself look decent though we have a store as well store.linuxgamecast.com. We got to thank Pickle Jeff for uh, buy, buying a shirt yeah. off that. Thanks man. Yeah. Th- 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 <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Uh, hope- hopefully my face is nestled firmly, safely between your your uh, your cleavage. Or if if it's that shirt, if it's the Hell Elk shirt, then I hope people <laughs> try to ask you for sandwich tips. Uh, Protect your sternum. <laughs> <laughs> protect your stern. We got we got wish zones as well. Uh, if you go to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support tab. I have one. Ben has one. Jill has one. Pedro has one. If you buy Ven some stuff, you get your name on the glowing chalkboard behind them. Uh, but if you buy any of us anything, you can send us a little note, and we'll uh, we'll read it on the air for you. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Look at all that shilling. Also, pop in our Discord if you subscribe to us. On uh, drop us a Twitch sub. That also gets you in our Discord, and where we do the. Uh, if you like racing, we do the Trek Mini thing on Tuesdays. But you can also jump into other games like tonight. Hey, if you're part of the after shows, and we'll be doing the back for blood all over your face. It'll be a good time, I promise. Until Bloody Jordan face. shoots the birds. <sighs> it's listen. I only did it once. Strider did it twice. <laughs> <laughs> you you shoot one bird, and they just call you the bird shooter for the rest of your life. You know, it was just wonderful, wonderful to be on the other end of actually watching someone else play Left 4 Dead. Mm-hmm. No, I'm like, 
Oh, the part of watching ninety like, percent of that is the arguments that immediately start taking place, like when communications and just immediately yeah, communication breakdown. Right like yeah. something goes yeah. to shit. It was your fault. Hundred <laughs> percent. Everyone starts pointing the fingers. It's it, it's good. Th- that that's the true game of Pack for Blood is the the friendship destruction. All right. Something that's not good is the shortage of GPUs. So we probably should talk about new GPUs that have yet to be released and rumors about them because, hey, what else are we going to talk about? But WCF Tech Health is going to be in our show notes after the fact at LinuxEmcast.com, but AMD is revolutionary. RDNA 3, a lot of us are waiting on that. Navi 31, talking about the Radian RX 7000, rumored to rock, not roll, just rock, up to seven chiplets. What does that mean? It means it's going to be fast. That's what it means. Now, first, before we even get into this, before we start looking at it, drooling at it, theorizing about it, I just want to thank, um, you know, NVIDIA for opening up that supply chain in preparation for the Intel Arc release. And Intel's like, fuck. Uh, we, we, listen, we technically released some in South Korea on a Wednesday for like six people on laptops. But we were talking about that in the pre-pre super shows and like uh, GPU prices have got drop down it's like supply just magically showed up right around the uh arc announcement so thanks intel um but you know there have been uh several rumors stating that the upcoming rdna3 gpus they're going to outperform whatever nvidia puts on the table the uh what what's a uh, lovelace is it the next series yes ada lovelace <laughs> yeah and in terms of rasterization performance so that's kind of interesting now me personally i'm concerned about two things uh, do you have any type of video encoding you know, something a la NV Inc., something that at least is on par with that. and Something that would be exposed through the Mesa drivers, please. Yeah, Thank you. That'd be nice. And uh, how much memory? That Those are the two things that are in my factor right now. And I I have no brand loyalty whatsoever. We're just rolling NVIDIA because, you know, despite what the internet will tell you, NVIDIA does actually has desktop support for Linux. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, granted, installing NVIDIA drivers is a bit more of a pain on Linux compared to just, you know, out of the box as it is with AMD right now. But yeah, it's uh, it, it's really hard to give a damn about new GPU releases when, okay, it's not as expensive now as it was, but when you see um, a two-year-old video card that's 100 to 500 pounds over MSRP, you go, why yeah. the hell would I pay more for a new one <laughs> for, for, no. for, for sure like se- se- seven chippies are nice I, I i would like seven chippies can i get it for under eight hundred dollars please nope <laughs> no. oh, wait, 800 why you, wait, you should say can you get it can I, can I get it period you know what we're that that stage of denial supplies there but um it, it's just you know retailers and everybody in the chain going everybody who couldn't help themselves They've already bought cards. Now you're down to us. Yeah. We're like, yeah. I've already <laughs> the, the waited two years. And we can wait. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can power through this. We, 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 were, we were having this conversation. Like, I, I, I have to be presented with a very good option to replace mm-hmm. this 1080 Ti. Like, well, every, everything else is just going to be like a moderate upgrade otherwise, right? It's, yep. Right. And it does. Yeah. It goes to show you, like, both of the, you know, Pedro has a 1080. You have a 1080 Ti. And, like, I'm on the lower end, but I'm not, you know, it's like a 2060, but we're still all in the same boat in just different areas of like, gotta wait, can't Pretty really much. do anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. And I always think about people building their first PC right now. It's completely impossible. In fact, stick around for the hate mail segment because we're going to try to give some advice on what you can do with like 200 bucks. That might uh, work out. Now, bottles. Bottles. Yeah. If you want to just launch some wine apps and you want an easy way to do that. Uh, you can use bottles, which is a nice little, uh, wine prefix manager. Bye bye dog. Um, yeah, uh, they have, uh, they have a new version out. It comes with a, uh, uh, they have a fancy schmancy new loading screen. Uh, they have a kill all button that will now ask you if you're absolutely certain you want to just kill just all your wine apps running. And it'll also detect your default wine prefix. So if you have stuff crammed in there, uh, they'll show up under bottles as well, which is always nice to see. Um, they also added support for OBS VK capture, VK basalt. Um, yeah, so the project is chugging along and yeah, if you need a, uh, If you if you need a wine prefix manager and just a wine prefix manager, it's a pretty compelling option. Hmm. I know yep. some people and, um, have praised this because of it's just like simple to the point UX. Like 
that doesn't try to do anything fancy. It's like, hey, you want to do the thing? Do the thing. Peter? It, it is, yeah, that, that is very much the point here, is Lutris gives you access to everything, but this is laser-focused. Okay, no. We are here to manage wine prefixes, and we're going to actually come up with a good name and call it Bottles. Good job. Very good. <laughs> very much appreciate the uh, very simple, to the point, and uh, well thought out name. I like it. Mm. I do. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's one thing we forget to ask Strider about when we had him on. Uh, what, what do you thought well, about he, bottles, Strider? What do you think <laughs> about bottles? <laughs> well, I, I, I was actually talking to him about that. Just I think we, we you were you were there as well. Just when we before we went uh, off uh, a couple weeks ago, where like um, Lutris gets. He was saying he has Lutris has a uh, reputation as a wine prefix manager, but it's not. It does like a lot more stuff. It's mm -hmm. more. It's more focused at like being a general game runner as opposed to something more narrow for wine prefix. I, I guess you could use it like that. Like a lot of people just use PowerPoint for everything for mm -hmm. some reason. <laughs> Fair right. enough. Okay, we need to do some push-ups. Yes. This is uh, always always something I like to see. You know, you see a game re get on, released on Steam, and I was like, hey, man, here's the back end. I'm just going to put it up on GitHub. You can play around with it and have a good time with it. And that's exactly what this person has done. And this is kind of an interesting game. Now, here's the GitHub again. There's also a Discord. Here's the Steam page. Warning, this code repository holds stuff that may not be... Of course. Hey, man. Level, level. Was move. <laughs> it's GitHub. We expect right. that. <laughs> so you go to take a look at the game itself, and it's pretty Rugs. decent. Yeah, it's roguelike with a twist. There's no weapons. As a player, you must manipulate physics objects uh, to survive fast-moving blocks and deal with damage. Now, this is written in Love 2D, so you... I love the opportunity to love dot the terminal because that's how you got to launch that. That's kind of yum, fun. Yum love not love. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love not if, available. If it was only that easy. Yeah. <laughs> and you might be able to tell, I mean, it, it genuinely is heavily inspired by, um, nuclear throne and like down well, but I'd like to think of this cause you know, you're the little character running around, like sucking up environmental things and like shooting them out at things. Like mentally, I want to think of this as a like control D make because that was my experience with control constantly running out of apples. <laughs> like, oh, let me just suck some shit off the walls here and kill everyone with. Yeah. I kind of like it. Yeah, no, I saw the like the physics manipulation stuff as oh, so it's a goat stimulator, but with a purpose. I'm okay with this. I'm very much okay with this, especially since the, uh, it's open source. Yeah, yeah. the other neat thing <laughs> is uh, the the guy says in his GitHub page he is uh, soliciting uh, code contributions. So if you find a bug or if you have improvements, you can submit them. Just file a pull request. Yeah, show him some love, as it were. <laughs> some love two D to give it a mention, which is one of the cool things we get to do now. Not not the last mention of love this week. No, though. no. Spoilers. But before we get to that, we need to talk about everyone attempting to copy Diablo back in the early two thousands. Uh, that was a thing that happened. <laughs> And uh, Westwood, which uh, you may remember as being one of, if not the first studio that Electronic Arts killed, uh, created Nox, which was very much their attempt at Diablo. And very, uh, well, there's eight fine folks here. How does here that can sword work? That doesn't look like it would be very, it would be very unwieldy, Pedro. Like, what do you kill with that? Like your sex no, drive? No, that's the lightsaber. That's oh. yeah, What's his face's okay. lightsaber? All right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it is uh, eight people are currently contributing to OpenNox, which is, as the name would imply, an open source engine re-implementation for Nox. Uh, I only ever played the demo back in the day, uh, came in one of the demo CDs, and I had to look up a video. It's like, okay, remind me what this game look like. Oh yeah, no, I remember that. But dude showed the, uh, in the video, showed the menu and I'm like, oh, that looks a lot like Dungeon Siege. Oh wait, Dungeon Siege came after this. Right, that's where they got the idea. Okay, Microsoft Studios, I'm on to you. <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty neat. Uh, this is done in Go, a little bit of C and SDL2. Uh, they actually had a release uh, a couple weeks ago uh, for the new version, which has a built-in SSH server and faster saving and loading. So if you want to get back into Open Nox, you can. I don't know about the... Uh, I know I know that they have some multiplayer stuff uh, working, because I know that, that was one of the uh, big draws of Nox, is the, mm -hmm. the multiplayer aspect of it. Also, apparently, it was one of the first games to like successfully implement Fog of War okay. in like, an isometric thing or something like well, that. Well, I know they've been through some things. Like, uh, it didn't go open source, open Nox itself until April 9th. And this was even after the developers have contacted EA and they're like, Hey, are you going to like 
nuke us, <laughs> sue us into oblivion. <laughs> right. And EA didn't really give him an official response, but it didn't seem like it was going to be that big of a deal. So uh, it is GPL3, and they invite people to come play with their toys, which is always nice to see. Uh, the big oh, no-no oh. on that page is, uh, oh, release! Linux releases are also available in the stable channel of our Snap package. Linux nightly builds are also available in the Edge channel of our Snap package. No one cares! Just... Oh, no. Let it go. The moral of this story is Pedro <laughs> doesn't like snaps, therefore they're completely. I mean, that's yeah. That's why he didn't get hired at Canonical. Hundred percent. All right, because uh, <laughs> he made that face do it. It was horrifying. That's yeah. what his cover shit oh, looked like. That, yeah, that, that was his, that was his cover letter. <laughs> Oh, bounce man. that shit right now he got through like two or three rounds just because hr wanted to show that picture to a few more people yeah. but outside of that yeah no, 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 this is filling some sort of uh hiring quota right like yeah, yeah no, absolutely. <laughs> all right coming up next it's time to eat some wieners shell out showdown coming up. Like I said, it's wiener time, chairquisition time. This week we're taking a look at Shellout Showdown. But before we get into that, what is the chairquisition? It's the thing I ask myself every week. Why am I here? Well, I'm here to tell you, play a game on Linux uh, with these people who will play it on a dis distribution with very similar hardware. And we'll give it a ranking based on our highly scientific, market-tested lawn chair metric. One chair means that's crap. Four chairs means that it's amazing. Uh, yeah, Shell Out Showdown. It's developed by uh, Managerium on the Love 2D engine. Uh, you can pick it up for, for about eight bucks. And what is it? A hectic food fight, reverse battle royale, set in the near future. Take on the role of a sapient vending machine and throw food to sublimity. Be the first vendor to give away all your items and remain empty handed for 10 seconds to win. And we got to thank uh, Managerium for sending us some keys over create or Curator Connect. So let's get into it. Pedro. What vending? Oh, I, I can see what vending machine you were. You're the blue one. You weren't like the hot yes. dog sand. I, I just went with the default one because I tried all of them. It's like, okay, this one I can sort of see in some levels, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, and Crack. also on the Steam Deck, uh, it launched out of the box. It holds 60 at 2560 by 1440 on this box, and 60 at uh, 1280 by 800 on the Steam Deck. The controller worked out of the box, and you can rebind everything. Uh, same for the keyboard keys, if you much fancy uh, the keyboard clacky sounds. Uh, some of the levels... Yeah, they make it very hard to see the characters like this one. If you're looking at the video version, it's all blue in the background, and I have a blue character. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> you can only really tell sometimes that there are uh, that there are other players there because you see the movement. Your eyes can detect the movement, but yeah, the character blindness is real. Uh, as for the fun, well, it is a party game. So yes, it could very well be fun. It's mostly going to depend on the other humans around you or if you have a regular group of people that you play games with. Though, to be fair, even playing against bots, I did find myself throwing my arms up in the air in celebration when I did win. Just like, yes, er, finally managed to beat the CPU opponents. Uh, but if we, if a game, even against just CPU opponents, elicits a positive physical response from me, it's definitely doing something oh, right. Aimed. Oh my god, I, but, I did uh, not play this level. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm reading now, because <laughs> yeah, when you're playing, you can't read the signs, man. No. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it it it, it is um, the, for a party game. It's unfortunate that it seemed to have lived and died in early access. It only came out of early access on April fourth, and the developers sent us uh, the keys for the game on Curator Connect a long, long time ago. Uh, so unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it took off. Uh, there's no one else playing it, as far as we're aware, and. It, it's not a terrible party game at all. It, it's really simple to understand, and once you do uh, give all your things to the other players, uh, it's very exciting to run away for 10 seconds, dodge everything, and do some, like, aerial bullshit to es escape everyone else ganging up on you. It is fun. But as it stands, it's a very lonely kind of fun. So, three chairs. Could have been a four easily if there were more people playing it. 
<laughs> yeah, on uh, Fedora 35 64 bit with the R9-3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti launches out of the box, but you're full screen or bust, baby. That's how, that's how it do. Um, when you got several dudes on screen, as Pedro alluded to, you get real bad character blindness. Uh, my first game with bots, I maxed out the bots and I could not see what the fuck was happening. So uh, note that. Um, DualShock 4 worked normally. They use the generic button prompts where they give you like the position of the button and not like X or A or whatever, which is it's fine. It's acceptable. Um, the sa- the soundtrack is definitely there. And fun wise, yeah, it's like Pedro said, it's OK. It just needs players. The rules are a little weird, but I think that's because the game does a bad job of explaining. Basically, you have a required number of hits you need to get. Uh, and you have a finite amount of ammo. You have like the tower fall style ammo where when people shoot stuff at you, you can pick up their ammo and shoot back at you. And it is simultaneously like your health and your score. Um, and as it stands, uh, playing with it, uh, playing it is, uh, getting my ass stomped by, uh, bots or getting slapped around by Vensum. So, uh, yeah, like Pedro said, there's a real dearth of players here that's hurting it. Um, cause yeah, uh, when you, when you fill a game with bots, it's like, okay, sure. You're not really playing against people. Um, it's super chaotic and that chaos usually goes super well with shit talking, but I can't shit talk a computer. I can't shit back, shit talk back. It can shit back, but that's because my computer is alive and <laughs> needs to be put down, but I won't, I won't let it. Um, yeah, and it's, ultimately, it's a fun riff on the Towerfall formula. And at eight bucks, it is a good party game. Uh, and at least it has online multiplayer, right? Like, that that's the big killer. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the games we see like this just have couch co-op, and that means they have no chance at all. Uh, here, you can at least play with people on the internet. So I'm going to give it two cheers. Good to see. Good to see. All right. Finally. Uh, what are my thoughts on this, man? With the Debian 11, the most modern of operating systems, Linux distributions, uh, maybe not, but on a Threadripper 1920X2060, you might imagine it could crush the pixels. No problem with the pixel pushing performance. Now, out of the box, rebindable controls. Good to see. Very happy to see that. No option for windowed, as Jordan pointed out, which makes it kind of difficult to stream. You might want to think about that, developers. No ray tracing support. Sad face. I know. One of these days. One of these days I'm going to get Ray Trace Pixels. Um, speaking of Pixels, bumping little Pixel-inspired soundtrack. I didn't mind it. You know, just sitting in the uh, lobby waiting for other people to show up to play online. I got to listen to quite a bit of it. More on that at 11. Hey, look, it's 11. Because I spent the first five or so minutes of this game trying to figure out how to add bots to the single-player mode. I couldn't figure out... It- wasn't immediately obvious. Then I did this thing. Brave new thing I tried out. I read the screen. It's a push up to <laughs> bots. I'm like, ah, I got it. After that moment of derp, you know, I loaded a room with the bots and attempted to separate my character from the background because that's reality. I mean, some of the maps like Neo Nuno Neo Nuno Nolans. Nowlands. Nowlands can that that entire map can just eat a bag of dicks because um, with anything more than two players, and even then it's rough. It's smearophone on that. Other maps, A-OK. I mean, the ones uh, Jordan and I played, pretty decent. Uh, like, especially the, uh, like, you know, retro 80s wave sense one. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was pretty decent. Uh, as far as the game itself, I mean, hey, you double jump, you dash, you sling your internals at other players. It's tag plus platforming. Simple mechanic, but you know what? It's a bit of fun when you're playing with fellow humans versus the bots. Um, and a big round of applause again, adding online multiplayer. I love seeing that there. Sadly, like the game from last week, nobody's playing this. And uh, Jordan, good news. Uh, I would like everyone to know that um, Linux Gamecast set the all-time player record for today. Actually, the past yes. couple of weeks. <laughs> oh, with yeah. Two. Record breakers. Yeah. That happened. Um, yeah, the peak for April 16 was due, and that was us. Ten minutes of open lobby on a Saturday. I sit around, and the only thing I caught was a Jordan. And we had, the- yeah, we had, the, we had the same idea. It's like, <laughs> is anyone on here? Oh, Ben's here. All right. Then two hot dog stands went at it. Uh, I look forward to the fanfic. Uh, speaking of single player, that involves you, some bots, and a level you rinse and repeat. There's no like story progression or anything like that. There's some cosmetics and trails that you can buy in the game. Now, I'll say something again. When it comes to a game like this, you you need to seed that online player base at some point. I don't care if it's a uh, giveaway 
or a nice multi-pack with a big steep discount. And you do have a demo, but like a free weekend. So we could go like, hey, we're going to play this tonight. And there's eight people. Let's all get on and play it. Or, and I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about like maybe going out and finding a Twitch streamer with an audience, you know, regular audience, like a thousand. <laughs> audience, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. And cut them a check because they're not going to do it for free. Um, but, you know, it's a fun game. It's a fun game. It's well done. They're just, again, like last week, everyone, I'm sad that, you know, there's not, you know, even a small online community, but there's nothing. I'll give it two cheers. And it's all down to, you know, me and you playing was, that was all right. That was fun. I could play a little bit of that. I, I could definitely see like probably up to four players. I can imagine like eight players. is just absolute chaos. Yeah, eight, yeah. eight, eight people. Yeah. You, like it's just shit flying everywhere. Yeah. And eventually like someone wins because one person gets all the fucking items. Yeah, someone realizes, wait a second. I, I got the thing. Oh, run away, run away. <laughs> Bail. And that is fun. hundred percent. I mean, yep. it, it's got that uh, loop in it to like when you're empty and you start, you know, summoning the snack demon and your pentagram like flows around you. Yeah, that part. It. Yeah, that's exciting. You're like, oh, oh, better get out of here. Oh, well, yeah, all right, I can dash. So yeah, uh, two chairs, and uh, hopefully something. Who knows? We were talking about this in the uh, live stream. Just uh, you know, games like Among Us kind of sit dormant. And you never know. You know, somebody might pick this up and it'll be the yeah. best thing since sliced bees. Yeah. If 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 you want to play Towerfall online, this is basically the closest you're going to get without <laughs> yes. a hub. So. <laughs> this one actually has an online multiplayer. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so there you go. Coming up next, I'm just a Linux machine, baby, and I won't work for nobody but you. Neither will my sound. It is the end. Yes. You join us at the very end of episode 504 of Linux Gamecast Weekly. If you've been watching since the beginning, I'm not sorry. Watch for the I'm beginning. I'm really I just, not sorry. I had to double wait, 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 I, five, five, 504 gateway timeout? I had to check the uh, episode number. I was like, oh, okay, all right. All right. T-I-L. <laughs> yeah, it's another 16 weeks and it will be 10 years. Yes. So, uh, but we're, at, we're, we have no more HTTP status codes to cover. We, we, we no, have hit most yeah. of them. <laughs> what is the, um, like status codes? Like I fucked up, you fucked up. Um, we fucked yeah, up. Yeah. 400 yeah. is you fucked up. <laughs> 500 is I fucked up. <laughs> yeah. If you'd like to tell us how you fucked up, uh, you can head over to linkschemecast.com, smash that contact button, do the thing, punch in the things, leave us a comment on YouTube, on Patreon, wherever we may be. Scream into the void, or, you know, come hang out in our super secret Discord that we're not going to tell you how to get into, but it's there if you can decrypt that message. And you too consent jesus that name um magic the slathering oh, oh okay <laughs> <laughs> like magic the slathering 1050 ti yeah. or rx 6500 xt now 6500 is, is the, 60, the laptop, the laptop GPU. one yes the four gig one <laughs> that they put yeah yeah, yeah. The, the, the 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 pci2 i think it is all right it's pci4 that's the problem <laughs> okay well for those of us uh who can count that high let me give it the, so and uh, Jesus. So, and wondering if I should get a 1050 Ti or a 6500 XT for a budget Linux gaming machine in the den. That's like a living room, but with a more den. Uh, both are within my 200 budget, but a new GPU wasn't. Um, wait. Any advice? I'm confused. How can that? Can you get it used? Maybe. Yes. I, I, you can. The 1050 Ti is used. Our about two hundred dollars. Yeah, they're about one hundred and sixty pounds here. Um, honestly, know, neither of those. <laughs> Just it, neither yeah, of them. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's tricky because at least with like the sixty five hundred XT, you get some RDNA two cores. You you, yep. you get something. Um, you don't get. Ti, uh, 1050 yeah, I was going to say. Oh, go on, go on. 
Say your business. <laughs> right. Uh, I was going to say that with the 6500 yeah. XT, you don't get the built-in encoder. But if you're all you're doing is gaming, then that's not an issue. The yeah, issue yeah. is, if you're building a budget system, chances are you probably don't have PCIe Gen 4 on that motherboard. Or if somehow you manage to get a motherboard with that, you don't have the CPU that supports PCIe Gen 4, probably. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to give you anywhere from 2 to... 50 FERPs less, depending on the game, uh, because you will be bottlenecking your, uh, the GPU will be bottlenecked to uh, PCI Gen 3 speeds on only those four lanes that it actually has. The 1050 has the big problem that it is a Pascal card, it which old. if you're trying, yes, uh, if you're trying to play your VKD 3D games, it's not going to be a very good experience like your Elden Rings, yeah. your, um, Cyberpunk, uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, Assassin's Creed. Yeah. basically anything that's the X12. So honestly, neither of those. A suggestion for the budget, the 5500 XT. That's actually a good card. <laughs> if you can find it for, it's probably going to be cheaper than 200 bucks. Uh, try to find it below 150. That's uh, the one you're looking for. 800. You. You, you 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 might you might also be able to get away with something like uh like a fi- uh, RX 580 or uh or a 570 maybe if you can find one still yes mm. yeah no if you can find the five uh, the 5500 XT for less than 150 that's the one to get <laughs> yeah it, it, it's tricky it's like what what is available in your in your area right? now not yes. to play ping pong back and forth so I mean uh, but here's another option. It would depend on what type of motherboard CPU you have because APUs. Yes. Because this is what I was going to ask is like a, what was it? The 6500? Yeah, 6500 XT. Is that laptop video card better than a modern APU? The, what was yes. it? The, uh, the mm. R7 or the, 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 the Vega, Vega 8 or whatever they mm. call it. Yeah, the 5700G that has the Vega 10 or Vega 8. Uh, 11 <laughs> something or other. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the numbering is all weird. I, I don't but know yes, what's what. But yes, the 6500 XE does have better performance for gaming specifically than the um, APUs. But it is, you do require that uh, PCIe Gen 4 socket. Mm. Yeah. That's the big yeah. one. <laughs> you know what? And I and I mean like maybe maybe that's the upgrade path, right? As you get the APU and then you get the sixty five hundred and then you have something, right? I don't know. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't. Hmm. Yeah, this is kind of like a turd in a shit sandwich, man. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah, no, those two options. Eh, but for casual gaming, yes. for casual gaming, <laughs> you know, I would say like go with the AMD option simply because you don't have to worry about the driver stack. Yep. And drop in, play the game. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, NVIDIA does long lived branches, but uh, that's not. Oh, man. Those drivers are I, not the best for uh, getting up and running with gaming. I, I look forward. Like, it's 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 going to be coming soon when those 10 series get the long lived branch. Mm-hmm. It's going to be it's going to be tragic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing Grace starts playing on the, on the backpipes. Uh, oh. All right. It's going to be hard. People. On, the, on that. Uh, Bagpipe filled. I don't know. Bagpipe. Bagpipe. It's a bagpipe and a bagpipe. <laughs> Bag suction, bagpipe baby. suction. Yeah. All right, beautiful people. We're going to bounce out of here. Thanks for showing up. Watch this live after the fact. We'll see you next week. But if you want to get in touch with me in the time between, you can do that. I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter. At Vin on our federated timeline, mass.linuxteamcast.com. At ReplyB in our IRC. All that information is under the live tab on our web zone or just at me in the Discord if you got something to say. I might say something back. I am a gas-filled cheap stomach. You can find me making horrible, horrible, beautiful noises on Twitter at The Burning Fool or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And I'm just glad that bagpipes exist because there's something out there in the world that sounds worse than me. (laughs) You can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter, which is thankfully a text medium, so you don't have to listen to me at all. Not with that attitude. I don't know, man. <laughs> Did the ba- bagpipes come in like Braille? Bra- Braille pipes? I mean, it, it does have a distinctive shape. You'd think that that would be I, I, automatically I mean, like... <laughs> if, 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 if you throw something at them, then it might hit them in the same way that bagpipes might hit Time you. Time for some credits. Yeah. <laughs>
Wasn't she in a dumpster? A Wasn't space she dumpster on, the moon? on the moon? Yeah, like moon dumpster. <laughs> she always jumped out of the ground. Fuck all. <laughs> yeah, after 10,000 episodes, I'm free. Man, episode 10,000, we get Rita Repulsa on as a guest. We have to thank our advisors, Omega, Sarth Theron, our executive producers, Aldeus, Barbara Epps, Kappa Show, and Top of Cast, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku, George, and Peeble, and our little Nick fans, Darkwing, and Abstraction, a.k.a. Nixon's Pyramid. And Sea Monsters, Jack, Renault, Ryder X, Machina, Treji, Vertinuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Strider, and Hakim. And the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresny, Kim, Smashley, Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Beck, Game Matron, um, Dodger, Xanthorus Gaming, I cannot read, Kydra, Kydra is there, <laughs> <laughs> and Foxy. <laughs> Look at the chairlings, Michael W. Rohit, uh, Rock Ramzawada, Thomas Zeno, Daniel Belrick, H.A. Be Oil of Hope, <laughs> and June Kraken, Ogi One, Felatio, Menno, and these fuckers. <laughs> no, but you gotta remind Ven during the week. <laughs> you gotta remind Ven when he's got DaVinci Resolve open. You gotta remind Ven <laughs> while Tomorrow, the credits then. are rolling. <laughs> That's the greatest way to get it fixed. All right, beautiful people. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Five dudes.